Hi, welcome to the CTO Advisor Daily Dose. You know what? A little bit different format. I'm on site at Datrium interviewing Datrium's CTO, Hugo Patterson, which we've had on the podcast before. Hugo, welcome back to the CTO Advisor audience. And also Devin Hamilton, Director of Engineering, I'm sorry, Systems Engineering mm -hmm. for Datrium. We're here with the V Brown Bank crew doing a build day. Super excited to just talk about the build day quickly. Devin, you've been helping the crew set up for build day. Ken, quick bite, what is build day and what are you guys doing exactly? Sure, so really the intent of, uh, of our build day exercise is to take a, a, a set of Datrium assets, which would be our compute nodes and our data nodes, and actually put those forth into an install process that would be just like when we deploy these at a customer site. So basically getting the whole hands-on experience soup to nuts from how you set things up initially out of the box, um, working through all the, the steps that are there, uh, kind of seeing what's simple, what takes some attention in the network and things like that, and bringing it up online uh, so that the customer can just kind of see through this process um, of the build day what it would be like if they had it on site. All right, and you can actually watch the Build Day event online. Actually, YouTube is one me mechanism. You can follow V Brown Bag on YouTube, or you can go to the vbrownbag.com website, and there will be a link there. But I wanted to talk to you two specifically about this concept of open converged systems. Now, I've the, you go. we've talked about this in the past, just the Datrium platform in general, but I'm starting to see the concept of open converged and other vendor literature. So mm -hmm. I wanted to, to at least spend some time talking through what is open converged, how is it different from hyper converged? So let's start there. So uh, thanks, Keith, uh, and I'm very glad to be here. The, the open converged uh, is leverages uh, has a lot of commonality with hyperconverged in that it scales the performance as you add compute resources as you add hosts the performance go increases uh, and that's the same as hyperconverged but the difference is that in open converged we don't turn the servers into persistent storage we have a separate set of data nodes where all the persistent data resides, and though they scale independently of the compute. So you can scale performance by adding compute, or you can scale capacity by adding data nodes. So David, help me out here. How is that different from my basic three-tier ar architecture? From a customer perspective, you, you talk to a lot of customers, and sure. like, okay, I can go out and buy my storage array, I have my compute, I have my management layer. Mm -hmm. I can scale those independently now. Why am I going to Datrium to get what I basically already have? Yeah, that's a great question, Keith. Right off the bat, the first thing to understand is that we're server-powered storage. So you want to kind of take on the mindset of really software-defined. And yet we've added to that uh, the components of a full turnkey solution that's enterprise grade that's all supported by one vendor. And so while you have a lot of choice and capability, you still have a, a cohesive model to, to take advantage of. Um, if you look at traditional architecture with a, a SAN, a network environment, and compute environment, and move that forward through HCI where you've kind of unified those and you have caching and compute up there in the host side, what you find is that in both of those camps, there is rigidity and cost associated with how those infrastructures are laid out. In our model, you have a completely open architecture that in fact focuses on what we call split provisioning. You can basically put out as many data nodes as you need for capacity, as many host compute nodes as you need to do that high-O and that, that compute side. Um, those are dissimilar resources potentially. You're saying that you can use basically any x86 architecture. Those can be servers that they are buying from Datrium in the form of what we call compute nodes or intermixing those with servers that they already have where we're making a betterment to the infrastructure that they already own. In fact, I'll even take that a step further and basically say that because of how we are deploying our technology as software on those compute nodes, we also can come into a customer environment non-disruptively and run right alongside legacy concerns that they already have that are amortizing. Does that make sense? Makes sense. In, in a traditional array that comes with a controller that has a certain IOPS capability, and every uh, host that you add to that environment gets a ever, you know, it slices that IOPS capability ever more thinly. Mm -hmm. In a server-powered architecture, the hosts are responsible for the performance. Every host you add adds more performance capability to the overall system. 
So you're not like subdividing a fixed pie. You're growing the pie in in a open convergence architecture. I, I have to push back a little bit on this. What I when I hear open converge, the first thing that comes to my mind is OpenStack, and I mm -hmm. go to I talk to a ton of vendors and. The, the concept of, oh, okay, I can take what I have, install a control plane, a.k.a. OpenStack on there, and then I can, you know, go to my uh, Linux distribution of choice and uh, do some type of classic file system across uh, some standard x86 holes and basically get the same thing in my mind. Where, where does that break in practice? And where does Datrium come in to fill the gap and say, and, and truly add value? So Datrium does support uh, Linux and KVM environments as, where, as well as uh, Docker bare metal persistent volumes. Uh, but we also uh, work very well with VMware and uh, virtualized environments. And that's very different from OpenStack, which is kind of more of an open source kind of a path. But the, the core of the data center uh, really most commonly is running VMware. Mm -hmm. And so integrating and supporting that environment is an, a very important part of, of what Datrium is all about. So let's talk about support and growing. Is this a, how, how is this sold? Is this a, because you, Devin, you said I can put it on my existing yeah. piece, but I saw some amazing benchmarks. And I don't know if that was on eight, Datrium branded hardware, mm -hmm. like how is this so, packaged and sold? Uh, so those uh, benchmarks were uh, developed in partnership with Dell. So they were uh, a huge help in providing 128 uh, servers because we scale up to uh, supporting 128 yeah, got servers. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yep. and, uh, and also uh, 10 uh, of our new flash based uh, data nodes. Uh, so that's a pretty big environment, and yes, 18 million IOPS, you know, supporting 8,000 uh, IOMark VMs, uh, it was uh, amazing. But that, uh, uh, we, we worked with uh, Dell to help uh, deliver that, so it's really pretty standard uh, x86 servers. So 128 nodes, that gets me in a mindset when I think of data center scale. We, mm -hmm. a, lot, a lot of the marketing in this industry has been around, at least in the hyper-converged space, web scale, data center scale, yeah. kind of, I can replace my data center with this architecture. Where some of that falls down, practically speaking, is in this unevenness of dis distributing uh, compute resources and storage resources. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I can't, that's not how my data center works. Sure. How, how does Open Converge and Datrium help with that problem? Can I build an entire data center architecture around this open converged concept? Yes, and, and uh, you know, De uh, Devin touched on this a little bit uh, before, but because our uh, hosts are isolated from each other, they're not a lot of crosstalk. Each host is responsible for its own performance, and it interacts really just with the pool of data nodes. And what that means is those hosts don't have to be all the same. The larger data center environments, they tend to be heterogeneous. There's a variety of different server types, maybe supporting different kinds of workloads, and data centers need the flexibility to support all of that, those mix of workloads uh, in the environment. And we can support third party. So we offer compute nodes, but we can also support uh, your own uh, compute nodes that you bring, your own uh, x86 servers, and you can mix and match. And they don't have to be all the same. You can have right. quad socket servers with lots of flash for a data warehouse, and you can put it uh, next to you know a few servers running VDI, and that can all be part of the same DVX. And the secret to this, and the secret to supporting uh, the you know, really the range of servers is that isolation of one server from another, the elimination of the crosstalk from one server to another, and just the conversation that happens between the servers and the data pool, which is storing those uh, persistent snapshots. So, Keith, Keith, can I bring a field perspective to that? Sure. So it's really important that um, our customers kind of recognize right off the bat that because we're not distributing I.O. across the host nodes, that the host can be dissimilar. And that's kind of the first blush comprehension of, of Datrium. 
what we add to that is really um, a new modality referred to as split provisioning. And to get back to the root of your question a minute ago, we can have a diverse amount of data nodes and a diverse amount of host compute nodes. That there is no tie between them. There is nothing that relegates that I have to have one for one or, or two to one or anything like that. That split provisioning concept means that if they have a capacity heavy workload, they can add more data nodes and grow at that cluster scale. If they have a more I.O. intensive workload, they can branch out and have more of those compute nodes and drive to tremendous I.O. numbers. So really, you can start from the customer's perspective with a single, a one and one a data node and a host compute node, and then scale that all the way out to 10 of these data nodes and 128 of these compute nodes. Flash can scale literally up to 16 terabytes per each host compute node factor and deduplication, you're talking pushing almost seven petabytes of, of active data in Flash in a fully blown out cluster. So we're going to get into this conversation on data management, copy data, and a couple of other videos that we're going to shoot as part of this DVX build day. I'm really intrigued on how customers can potentially save money. We appreciate Datrium for sponsoring the CTO Advisor Daily Dose on site for the Datrium build day on V Brown Beck. We'll talk to you next CTO Daily Dose. Hugo, Devin, thanks a lot. My pleasure. Thank you, Keith.